Under section 2, block 2, unit 17, series reactants impedance, you have assignment sheet number 2 where you're asked to review some on inductive reactants. I'll work out one. Here we've got, you're asked to draw a circuit which has a, an inductor and a resistor. We'll have alternating current. We have a resistor inductor in that circuit. That resistor has a value of 5,000 ohms. In other words, R1 is equal to 5,000. Our inductor in this case, L1, is equal to 0.7 Henry's. This is a series circuit with alternating current applied to it. We know the rules for series circuits. What we need at this point is what opposition to current flow is created by that inductor. If we look for, in other words, we're going to be looking for our inductive reactants. X sub L is equal to our inductive reactants. Okay, the formula for inductive reactants is equal to 2 pi F L. We take 2 times pi, which is a constant, 3.14, times F, which is our frequency, times L, which is the value of the inductor in Henry's. Now, had this been in millihenries or whatever, we would have had to change this to Henry's. So we have 2 times 3.14 times the value of our frequency here in the, say, 1B is 100 cycles. So we're going to have 100 then times the value of the inductor in Henry's, which is 0.7. Now I've worked this out, and what we should come up with is a value for inductive reactants of 4396. 4396, and that is a value in ohms. So our opposition to current flow created by this 0.7 Henry inductor is going to be, our X sub L is going to be 4, 3, 9, 6 ohms. And that was with 100 cycles per second applied to that circuit. Now this is important. You have to know how to uh, work this out before we could go on with that circuit. Now if the value of that circuit is given to you, for inductive reactants, you don't have to back up on this step. But we needed a value in ohms for an opposition to current flow so that we could solve for total opposition to current flow in the circuit. <coughs> now we know that by the triangle method, we can calculate out here what our total opposition to current flow is. Now that would be a value in, in, uh, in ohms. It would be represented by Z. That is our impedance of that circuit. Now because opposition to current flow is additive, what I can do is add it by the right triangle method. So the formula we would use would be Z then is equal to the square root of R squared plus x sub l squared. Which means what we're doing here, you see we're taking a right triangle and in other words, this is the right triangle formula that we're using. We're looking for z 
our opposition to current flow in the form of a resistance was equal to 5,000. Our X, our reactance in this circuit, was 43.96 ohms. That means by the right triangle or the vector method, I can find out what my opposition, total opposition to current flow would be. And I've calculated that out. We have 66.58. 66.58 ohm. So this would be our impedance for that circuit. What we can do now, after we get to this point, is calculate the rest of our circuit through Ohm's law. We've reduced it down to total opposition. That means if I knew what my total voltage was, I know what my total resistance is, that means that what I could do is find out what my total current would be in that particular circuit. If I put an ammeter in here, you see, and I could calculate out what my current flow would be. Then I can go back to Ohm's law. Now, the formula that you're familiar with in Ohm's law would be to find current is I is equal to E divided by R. However, in this case, I can substitute for R by putting Z in the formula to find my current flow. Let's carry this on just a little bit further. Let's say that we know that we have a voltage here, an applied voltage of 13,316. Now I'm using odd numbers so that we can make this come out a little bit easier here. If I have a total voltage of 13,316 and I have a total opposition to current flow of 6,658 ohms, I would be, by using this formula, I would plug in I would plug in like this. My current is equal to my total voltage divided by my total opposition to current flow, which is impedance. I would have 13,316 divided by 6658, and that goes in there two times. We're looking for current, so this would be in amps. So my current flow through this circuit would be to amp. Remember now that we stated that opposition to current flow was additive. We used the right triangle method because it was additive by the vector method. In an inductive circuit we know that, that, that we, we're going to have a situation where our vector diagram is going to be drawn like this. We'll get in, when we get into power we'll bring this up again too. But by taking total opposition to current flow into total voltage, we came up with total current. Total values give you total values. If you stick with the right parameters, you see, you'll come up with, with uh, the answers you're looking for. All right, now we also know that the current is the same throughout all its parts. So if I have two parameters for opposition to current flow, that means I can find the unknown variable. Now I could calculate out what the voltage drop would be across that inductor. Because I know as well that my voltage drop is going to be equal to my current times my reactance in this case. Now the only difference between that and our own law formula is that instead of R, I put X in there. But it will also work out the same way I did with impedance over here. Now I'm looking for the voltage drop across that inductor. If I plug in for this formula, I would have 2 then times my reactance, which is 43 
nine six, and I would have a voltage drop across that inductor. I've worked it out here, eighty seven ninety two. I would have eighty seven ninety two volt, or eight point seven nine two kV. Let's just put that up here as well. Eight seven nine two volt. That's my voltage drop right here at my inductor. I can alter my formula here somewhat. Put in R now because we're going to find the voltage drop across our resistor. Now we know we're going to take 2 times 5,000 which would give us 10,000 volt drop across our, our resistor. We'll have a 10 KV voltage drop across that resistor. We know that in a series circuit that our voltage is additive. We just said that we have 10,000 volt drop across our resistor. We have an 8,000 792 volt drop across our inductor. If I add the two together, I would have 18792 volt, which is supposed to equal our total voltage. Well, our total voltage is 13,316, which is 5,400 and some less than that. But I'm hoping you're out there saying, but we have a resistor and an inductor. That means we have to add them by the vector method. And bingo, you'd have it right on the nose. If we add them by the vector method, you would see that we would have for our voltage drop our across our resistor, we would have a 10,000 volt drop. Across our reactor over here, we're going to have 8,792 volt drop. Additive by the vector method, if I right triangle it, you'll have 13,316 volt drop, which is the total for that circuit. There's our resistive component, our reactive component, our total voltage drop. Then it's 13,316. You might want to check my math to make sure that's right. Now remember, in a series circuit, we said that our opposition to current flow was additive. We also said that over here that our voltage drops across the dissimilar components now are also additive. So that when we add them, we use right triangle in either case. Our current's the same. The only other variable that's additive, and we don't want to get into this now because we're going to get into it a little bit later, is power. And you'll see where what we will do, we know current's the same. What I can do then is using our basic power formula, P is equal to EI, I can multiply my current times my voltage in all three of those cases, and I will have units of measure of power then all the way around. And that would also be represented by the right triangle method. In other words, we're going to have the same ratio when it comes to power as well and our opposition to current flow is the same ratio too. If we want to, by using the trig that we just had, we can figure out what the phase angle, the, the power factor angle is going to be of that circuit because it's going to be this angle right here. I could use uh, cosine of the angle, I could use sine, I could use uh, tangent, any one of those will give me this angle right here. And that would show you then, if I have alternating current here, how much my current is going to be 
lagging behind in that circuit because that's the angle that we would have. If I start out here at zero and say right here it'd be 90, here it'd be 180, 270, and 360 or zero, you could plot out and find out just exactly how many degrees your current is actually lagging in that circuit. The power we'll do a little later on in this class.